welcome to our Dental Business Transaction podcast. And my guest today is the fascinating Lewis McKenzie, or as I like to think of him, is one of our very own dental peaky blinders. So, <laughs> uh, I mean, firstly, uh, Lewis is a general dentist. Uh, he is head dental officer at Demplan and a clinical lecturer at Birmingham School of Dentistry and King's College London. So quite a career, um, I think, spanning over the last how many years, Lewis? Uh, now, 32 years. But I suppose if, uh, if you take me back to when I started at dental school, I started in uh, 1986. 1986. I was six years old then. Well, that's really uh, got us off to the wrong sort of start. <laughs> <laughs> and part of the reason it's you know, I find it fascinating is you have lived through, you know, lots of change in dentistry and, you know, been in the journey from education and dentistry yourself through to uh, your role now in helping young day dentists in education themselves. Um, so I'm not trying to say you're old, uh, but, you know, I wanted to try and pick your brains today. I think one of the most fascinating uh, pieces of information that you shared with me before this was that you've worked in the same practice for 30 30 Uh, years? 32 years, yeah, now. Um, Yeah, so obviously that is pretty um, unusual in dentistry, certainly in my era where uh, quite commonly you'd move around a few practices uh, to to begin with. And obviously nowadays it's, it's common to work in multiple practices at the same time. Uh, but to be, I was just lucky uh, that I started, it was before um, vocational training, before foundation training was compulsory. So I just went in as a as an associate and uh, myself and my, my boss, David Payne, hit it off literally from day one. Um, you know, we became really good friends um, and we played cricket for the same team. For, for 20 years as uh, as well and he's, he's, he and his family are still still good friends so he's just really really lucky uh to uh to to just have that relationship right at the start why why do you think well it's certainly at the top of my psyche at the moment why are so many dentists looking to uh transition to sort of solely private do you think what what are the drivers um over the last uh 20 years where I've been in in dental education um I've asked that question of of lots of dentists who have made that transition I've done over a a sort of a thousand hands-on courses now which are really a fantastic opportunity to chat to colleagues working in different uh, areas of the country uh, different types of practices uh, and so I've asked that question a lot uh, and the, the word that always is mentioned in in the last twenty years of the you know thousands of dentists I've spoken to, uh, the the most common driving factor is time, uh, and it's it's time with with patients, uh, just time to make uh, uh, time to make uh, good notes, time to uh, do the treatment that the patient uh, it, it will most benefit from, time to think about stuff. Um, but also on the flip side of that as well, it, 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 working in private practice actually gives you that life work balance back because once you remove those targets, once you remove those limits, um, that you're, you're in total control of your own career. Because um, when when Demplan was was set up, there were basically three uh, three drivers. Uh, uh, it, it was back in the eighties. I don't know if you watched the uh, uh, not the recent season of the Crown, but the uh, the season before that. The eighties were a time of absolute upheaval uh, nationally. Uh, obviously, you were hardly born at that stage. Uh, I did Abby go was... on an anti poll tax uh, march, though. Lewis. Oh well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> um, so it, it was a real time of upheaval nationally. You know, mass unemployment. Um, uh, record inflation way beyond what we've got at the uh, at the moment, and that's bad enough. Uh, and it was a tough time in dentistry as uh, as well. So the profession was looking for something different. And Demplan came along in eighty six and was basically um, founded on three principles, which are just as true today as as they were uh, as they were way back then. And the and the first one was to actually give um, dentists and practice teams control of their professional careers. The second one was to create an environment where 
quality patient care was at, was at the uh, uh, at the foremost, uh, and the third one was to actually align the dentist and the patient, uh, where the focus is on prevention and minimally invasive dentistry. So getting away from sort of uh, activity based remuneration, actually getting paid to keep patients healthy. Just taking, so you, you're you in practice, you're working with your patients, but I guess you have a lot of co- contact as well with young dentists through your lecturing and your clinical lecturing role. Uh, how have you seen sort of the young dentist cohort sort of change over the last 20 years since you've be, been involved there? Uh, again, no, uh, that, that's that's been one of the most enjoyable bits of, of my career is, is working in undergraduate teaching. That that's that was my first sort of um, move into teaching uh, was was to just teach on a, a final year clinic uh, just on a on a Thursday afternoon. I started uh, I started off um, and ju- I just really liked it straight away. I was just sort of sort of testing it out really, and just uh, immediately I sort of liked. The, the fact that you could like really help lots of lots of young dentists uh, at a stage. I remember I was really lucky; had really good tutors um, when I was at Birmingham, and had a very positive learning experience. Uh, and I think, in fact, there are quite a few people in my year have actually gone back into dental education. Some of them, uh, some of them full time as well. So I think we were lucky that we had we had a really nice era where we had some really great sort of inspirational tutors. Um, and I've experienced what they experienced uh, was was actually sort of helping uh, uh, young dentists because it's a tough course. You know, it's five years nowadays. It was only four years and one term when I did it. Um, but uh, but it's a tough course. And uh, and so I really found it very rewarding helping, uh, you know, he- helping young um Young dentists or young dental students become passionate about dentistry and I've been really lucky. I've worked with some absolute geniuses as well uh, who are who are now internationally famous lecturers. So so I, I go to their lectures and webinars mm-hmm. now. So, you know, they, I, I've 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 uh, to answer your question, I, I've, I've seen my students become my teachers. Uh, you talk about uh, sharing passion. I guess, where does your passion for dentistry come from um, that you're able to share with the, those dentists through education? Where, what, what about, where's your passion come from? I think it's actually the, the job itself. Mm-hmm. I, I really like dentistry. Um, uh, I, uh, I really like being a dentist. I really like chatting to other dentists as well. You, you see it all the time. We're a, we're a strange bunch. Um, but, uh, but, you know, uh, I think in a good way. Um, so the passion, I really think really comes from the, the, the practical aspects mm-hmm. of doing it, fixing things, you know, he- helping, uh, helping patients, solving problems, being really, really lucky that literally in the, th- almost exactly the 30 years that I've been working, we've seen this just absolute explosion in aesthetic and cosmetic dentistry as, as well. Uh, so that's become a real sort of passion for me as well. And of course, it's massively popular, uh, particularly so nowadays, is is actually having aesthetic or, or cosmetic um, dentistry as, as part of your day to day dentistry as uh, uh, as well. Um, and uh, so and the, the leaps that there have been, particularly with direct composites techniques. So now there's there's almost nothing that you can't do yourself to restore teeth. I had, was lucky enough to uh, sit in on Simon Charles' lecture at the recent yeah. Demplan forum, and you know I'm not a clinician, but oh my goodness, yeah. what you can achieve in in dentistry uh, now it's absolutely fascinating. Uh, when I was younger, I fancied being a doctor, but I'm actually thinking maybe there's a missed opportunity in dentistry. <laughs> so, <laughs> But so there's, there's still you... time, Abby, because you're you're so uh, you're so young. Uh, <laughs> you, if you want to pivot to pivot to dentistry, in fact, we're getting we're getting um, a, a number of uh, of uh, medical colleagues um, uh, and even vets mm. uh, sort of pivoting into into dentistry. I think obviously all the healthcare professions have have got have got 
issues uh and obviously we're so focused on on dentistry but uh, but but i think you know dentistry is it's a it's a fantastic profession um and it, it, i mean it's so all-encompassing it's such an intense sort of job and i think sometimes we forget um to to list all the the benefits that it gives us um from a you know from personal rewards uh, point of view um and, and it's easy it is easy to overlook the, the positive aspects interestingly you said about you were always like that you know w- were you always like that and when did you decide you know dentistry was for you well that that is um uh, w- was the subject of controversy uh, i always thought i decided i wanted to be a dentist when i was 11 um which is obviously I, I no 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 reason for that. Uh, no, nobody in my family has ever was ever sort of in in any sort of healthcare uh, profession. Um, but my auntie um, religiously, um, I mentioned this on a on a previous podcast actually. Uh, yeah, my auntie had insisted that I was about six when I first said I wanted to be a dentist, and. So I thought, no, 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 how could that have happened? But one of my uncles, who was in his 90s, I went up to visit him in the Lake District uh, mm-hmm. just before the pandemic. And he said, yeah, you were. I was about six. So, And and once I decided I wanted to, to be a dentist, I never changed my mind. Mm-hmm. I um, basically uh, just f- focused entirely on that, chose my uh, uh, O-level subjects, accordingly chose my a level um subjects accordingly had to drop things that i enjoyed things like arts and woodwork and uh which would have been would have been fairly useful i think the hobbies for the future though Lewis. yeah yeah Hopefully so you haven't dropped them completely <laughs> oh i've actually taken uh, t- it's taken t- t- taken them back up again in the pandemic yes I've, uh, i'm on a project at the moment of uh, of uh, uh, portrait uh, portrait drawings 100 heads so i'm up, up to about 85 now and, and in fact, going back to where we started, also having that time, I think, I think we've all, everyone's, it's almost like we've had a reset, isn't it? Mm-hmm. That I think everybody's looking at their life work balance. You must be getting into these conversations yeah. all the time where people have been literally running as fast as mm-hmm. they can for years in a practice, the whole team, and suddenly been forced to stop. I think a lot of people have literally just mm-hmm. reevaluated, not just, their dental careers but their whole lives actually highlighted it during the pandemic you know stopping and thinking what do I want to do with my life what do I enjoy doing but it's an incredibly important part of um, when I'm working with dentists leading up to their sale what so how do you see people that's kind of retired because obviously you're potentially sort of wound down uh, your dentistry but after somebody's finished their practice what advice would you give them to keep sort of connected if they're not working clinically anymore with with their community and their culture and uh, uh, their colleagues. I mean, that is such a good point that you bring up as well. And I've noticed this over the last 20 years as well, chatting to, you know, literally thousands of dentists who are, who are coming up to or making that transition. And it's, it's, it was one of the things that really polarized my opinions about purely NHS dentistry and, and private and mixed practice dentistry, because I chatted to so many dentists who were literally just almost literally flogging themselves, uh, seeing, a, you know, sometimes up to 80 patients a, a, a day, but but certainly on average uh, sort of 40 patients a day. And literally, even sort of fairly youngish dentists, just literally almost counting the days until they retired and they could take their, take their pension. And then equally, I'd go to um, uh, Demplan courses and I'd chat to dentists way, way older, you know, sometimes way beyond retirement age, literally having the conversation and on occasion almost in tears because they had to retire and because they were so passionate about their jobs and almost being a dentist actually was part of their identity mm-hmm. as well. And and so a real sort of uh, almost fear of, of suddenly that being switched off uh, that obviously creates a risk of holding on a little bit too t- too long. There's no doubt about it. Dentist does become more difficult as you get older. Eyesight gets gets a bit um, gets a bit rubbish, 
uh, and, uh, and manual dexterity as uh, 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 as well. Um, but um, but from an experience point of view, it, you know, it is a job that you can continue to do to a very high level till you're, you're really really old. Um, uh, and so, I'm a, I'm a hoping to sort of answer your question that 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 sort of enforced pause probably has made everybody think about their whole lives and their families and and how they're going to use their time on earth uh, and, and what they're going to do when suddenly dentistry is switched off. You say every single minute of your day and your working day is scheduled, isn't it? When you're a dentist and the rhythm of that and the kind of the the engagement all through the day, that is a big adaptation. So I'm a real believer in setting yourself up for that time, point in time when you do retire, reducing your days, bringing an associate in to sort of take on new patients or hand over some of your patients as well, and gradually sort of um, acclimatise yourself, I guess, to, to, to moving away. And that can be a very, very good thing for your sale as well, because one of the things that buyers are very cautious of and market value is dependent on is a practice is completely dependent on the on the owner yeah. yeah so it makes sense from uh getting the best results from your sale but more importantly helping to adapt to my identity as a practice owner and as a dentist and a clinician to what is their outside work that i want to do what i choose to do and what i love to do yeah uh, because life's got to be meaningful after dentistry too <laughs> but then oh, that's such again, brilliant advice I see dentists still coming, you know, that have retired quite a few years ago, coming to all the shows and the exhibitions. They want to keep their hand in. They want to see what's going on with the latest toys, uh, you know, meet up with their colleagues. So, you know, there are there are plenty of opportunities to stay connected with your profession. Um, yeah. uh, I mean, I, I'm uh, say it's, it's a lot of my um, mentors um are, are are reaching retirement age and some of them are retired as well um but they're, they're still most definitely involved one of my one of my key mentors a, a, a chap called adrian shortall who is the head of conservative dentistry at uh at, at birmingham he he literally took me under his wing when i was sort of getting into teaching uh didn't really know what i was talking about um and um he he, he really uh, was was pivotal in, in my development, he and he and Trevor Burke, in in particular, but Adrian now he's been retired for uh, well, it's it's probably getting on for about eight years, but I still get emails from him. We we usually uh, uh, it's usually film suggestions is uh, is at the front of the email, but then he will all also attach a number of papers that he's selected um, from from various journals that he still still subscribes to. Uh, that uh, that are sort of the key developments in different areas. So you, you know you can retain that passion and interest actively um, because you know there are so many developments mm -hmm. in various different uh, in various different areas. And um, of course, there's so much good content available online now. It's really easy to stay uh, stay connected to the absolute best speakers on each particular subject uh again like the series we've got going at the moment uh, that, uh, that that finishes that finishes next week i've watched every single one of the lectures even though some of the subjects are something that you know i, I haven't got any interest in in some examples orthodontics has always been an absolute mystery to me um but um, but i've watched all of the lectures and when people talk passionately passionately about a particular subject you know, it's really engaging as uh, as uh, as as well. And um, I don't listen to many podcasts. I don't do many podcasts. Um, thank so you. thank you for this kind uh, kind in, in, invitation uh, because I like that sort of sort of the visuals as uh, uh, as well. Uh, but I'm I'm definitely better better for radio than uh, than, uh, than on the telly anyway. I think you're looking um, pretty cool there in the studio. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't know that you don't do many podcasts. But what's something that's really really clear to me is some of the key people that have influenced you, uh, you know, mentors and clinicians over the year, the positive experiences that you've had, 
and now you giving those positive experiences um, and guidance to the young generation of dentists and absolutely how excited and passionate you are about the, the, the dentistry profession. Um, and, you know, sometimes I'm talking to people with some of the, the tough things about working in dentistry and practice. But, you know, something that's really clear to me today is how exciting uh, dentistry is and how much is out there and how much uh, opportunity there is to, to, to stay excited about doing dentistry. And, uh, um, you know, if I was uh, 10 years younger, you never know, you might be enrolling me onto the dentistry school in Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're more than happy to take m- mature students, and uh, you, you would fly through the course with your knowledge of uh, of, of dentistry. Yeah, and if you know, if anybody wants to talk to me, my favourite kind of subject is about planning. Uh, obviously, to get the best outcome of yourself, but more than that, is planning how you want to exit your business, and then what you want to be doing with your life um, afterwards. So that's what I'm really passionate about. So if anyone wants to talk to me, I'm all ears. Perfect. And again, from the feedback uh, that that I always get from the the conversations uh, that, it, uh, that people have had with you and your team, you're definitely doing everything right to actually help that tra- help that transition because these 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 businesses, and I've seen this so many times. I mean, I've never done it because I've never had the the business the business skills, the business knowledge, uh, or the motivation. But these build, these businesses have literally been built by hand in many mm. cases from scratch over over three, four, sometimes more decades. And so they are, you know, they are they're part of the family. They are so precious. And so the work that you and your team do in actually easing that transition from one owner to another owner or sometimes to multiple uh, multiple owners, you know, you're doing such a, a valuable job for the profession um, because th- these these are precious commodities uh, mm-hmm. and and I'm not meaning at all from a financial point of view of course they are you know really um successful businesses but it's actually managing the personnel and managing the relationships as uh, as well you know so so the work that you do I can't even begin to imagine how difficult it is uh, but the work that you're doing is absolutely critical part yeah. of the profession well, we're riding the emotional roller coaster with our dentists, you know, day to day because it is uh, something that's been built, like you say, which is valuable because of the people in the business, uh, the culture of the business, the ethos of the business. And like you say, some of them, people set their practice up from scratch or uh, bought it many years ago and uh, it's really part of their life. Mm. Yeah. Um, so... We could talk forever on this subject, couldn't we? I'm sure, Lewis. Yeah, um, yeah. And with your you've knowledge, made this very painless. Your 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 knowledge spanning three three decades. It's like when I went to the uh, Birmingham, uh, not Birmingham, Bristol Air Museum. It's just seeing the progress from sort of wooden biplanes uh, through through the war. Obviously, there was some reason to advance very very quickly, but to see the amazing feats of sort of engineering and progression in a relatively short time and my impression of dentistry is you know the acceleration and the progression and what there is you know the the techniques and evolution in dentistry is just fascinating in itself so thank you so much for sharing that with me today um and it's been a pleasure um having you here as our guest i'm sure we can pick up this offline sometime thank you abby